welcome to an unironic video about Call of Duty 4 for the Wii. What some people seem to forget these days is that there was once a time where everyone and their dog wanted motion controlled video games. The field of computer graphics always had simulation as a goal. Using systems we could simulate reality and using graphics technologies we could visualize those simulations. But then computer graphics applications started including interactive elements. It was at this point that in addition to simulating a world, there was a desire to simulate the way a user could interact with that world. You can see this by looking at the earliest cave automatic virtual environments, or just caves for short, built in the early 90s. Yeah, you know that one VR Battlefield 3 video everyone's seen? Yeah, that came from technology created a quarter of a century ago. So fast forward a couple of years and some nutcases at Nintendo say, hey guys, imagine if you could play games with this. And the Mad Men, they actually freaking did it! The Wii was a huge step. I mean, literally one day there was no commercially available simulative control solution for games on the market, and the next day, boom, there was. Unlike most technology, you didn't see a slow progression towards it. You just woke up one day and you could play tennis in your living room. It did a really good job fulfilling a desire literally everyone had. I remember just the market for like renting Wii consoles. Like you could go to the place and you could rent a Wii for the weekend just to play like Wii sports for your family. I remember that being huge. But of course the cost was cheap and the hardware was weak so obviously some concessions had been made. Take the tennis game for example, you've probably never put too much thought into how exactly it works. But I'm going to explain to you now how the entire game functions with three inputs, two of which could realistically be buttons. So what you think is happening is that the remote in your hand is realistically transmitting your exact movement to the character on screen. What's actually happening is, well, you've got a racket, right? And when the ball comes, you want to hit it. So imagine the length of this racket is a measure of time. The earlier you swing, the higher up on the racket will be the collision point with the ball. If you hit the ball at the earliest point from the tip of the racket, you'll send the ball far into the same direction as your swing. So if you're swinging from left to right, you'll send it to the right. If instead you swing the racket at the latest possible point though, the ball will be sent mostly straight forward. It's all based on timing. The earlier you swing, the more of an angle you'll send the ball. That's it. So the two most important inputs are the direction of the swing, which you must get right otherwise you'll miss the ball altogether, and the swing itself, which in the game is controlled by the waggle. You can imagine a controller with just two buttons, one for a left swing and one for a right swing that could serve the exact same purpose as the remote. The the only other input the tennis game takes is the force of the swing, which admittedly is pretty critical when it comes to selling you on the feeling of actually playing, but yeah. So motion control games have been out for a while, and people have kind of gotten over them for the most part. I'm gonna assume we've all had our fair share of experiences with them, so I'm gonna ask you a question. What game has the best motion controls? Now everyone probably has a different answer for this based on preference, and you already know my answer to this as it's evident just from reading the title of this video, but you know if we were asking a slightly different question, say for example, what game makes the most appropriate use of motion controls, I'd probably have to say Splatoon because that gyro aiming is to die for. What we're talking about though are games where motion control isn't an optional feature and isn't a one-off gimmick. We're considering games whose central mechanics are linked to simulative control, where real world skills are transferred to the game space. The sorts of games where if you're bad at the thing you're doing in the game, you'll be bad at the game. If you're bad at boxing, you'll be bad at the boxing game. So let's talk about that for a minute. For a lot of people, the answer to the question posed would probably be Wii Sports Boxing. Of the entire Wii Sports package, it's the most complex game and the only one to make use of the nunchuck attachment. Motion control is absolutely central to it. But again, once you understand the actual scope of its gameplay, you realize exactly how simple it really is. So in the Wii Sports Boxing, you have three possible positions. Hold them straight up vertically to cover your face, point them forward to cover your body, and tilt them slightly downwards to cover your waist. From each of these three positions, you have two inputs you can make that allow for the execution of two possible punches. Gesture the remote forward to do a straight punch, and gesture it sideways to do a hook, unless you're in the bottom position, in which gesturing it sideways actually does an uppercut. That's probably why you've had trouble launching uppercuts in the game. Unless you know the right combination of tilt and waggle direction, it's hard to figure it out. You can also tilt the two controllers to either side to dodge, which you can use the opportunity from to counter, but as far as controls go, that's about it. I happen to be a pro at this stuff. <laughs> was anyone there for that, that non-stop boxing stream I did a couple of years ago? <laughs> that was fun. That's actually where I learned how the controls worked because I had to I had to Google them. I was having so much difficulty fighting these dudes and, and the fact that I, I didn't know how to launch certain punches was an issue. So that, that's kind of where that came from. Yes! Yes! Come on, get up! Huh? You wanna fight? You wanna fight? Yes! Yes! Wow! Come on, come on, come on, come on, tell me, tell me, tell me. Whoa! Yes! Yes! Oh! <laughs> Guys, I did it! Guys, I did it! Oh! 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 oh. oh. 
So yes, this game is much more complex than the others, but still, once you break it down, it's not that deep. The only related inputs are rotation and direction, that's as far as it goes. Another issue is that the controls slash movements for some moves, the one I highlighted being the uppercut, are not given to the player and are somewhat unintuitive. Furthermore, the game offers you no way to modify the controls. I mean, basically every game includes some sort of settings for, like, control stick sensitivity or alternate control schemes, and they do that because it's needed. Not every player has the same preferences. When you're asking a player to actually move their body though, there's definitely some choice needed from the player's end as to how they want their motions to be interpreted by the system. Forcing a player to commit to an awkward arm gesture without the option to modify it is crappy, especially when the gesture required isn't afforded to the player very well. Who would have ever figured out that pointing the remote downwards and shaking it to the side is how you do an uppercut? That feels more like slapping somebody's knees. I mean, everybody looks back at this game fondly. I do too, but seriously. To punch a guy in the gut, you have to point the remote forward and plunge it into them. This isn't boxing, this is a stabbing. This is you're, you're freaking just murdering a dude in the boxing ring. As a result of stuff like this, real world skill isn't transferred into the game. Remembering poorly afforded gestures will beat actual boxing skill. I mean, imagine how much better the game would have been if you could synchronize your own motions to each action, similar to button mapping. Like the way the game works is that it takes input from the Wii remotes and then it maps those to actions, executing the most likely action. Imagine if instead it just mapped those actions against ones that you had set yourself. That would be ideal. That was a good one. I'm trying to raise one hand. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Now, not all motion-centric games need to be fully reliant on motion controls like boxing. A game can tie its primary modes of interaction to motion and reserve other aspects of player control to traditional stuff like buttons and analog sticks. A good case study for this is Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, or the PlayStation Move version of Resident Evil 5, if you know you're one of the three people who played it. So Resident Evil may not have been entirely motion controlled, but all of its offensive commands used the setup. Aiming non-scoped weapons was done entirely through the use of the pointer, even giving you a little on-screen reticle as a substitute for the laser pointer. Knifing was also done using controller waggle, a gesture that additionally allowed an exclusive feature to be added to the Wii version, the quick knife. This move had you immediately pull out the knife and swipe at a nearby enemy box or barrel, doing reduced damage but doing it much faster than manually equipping the knife and aiming it at the desired target. Am I having- is there a lightning storm happening now? 80% chance of thunder showers at 3 o'clock. Oh crap. The addition of a pointer and waggle gesture in Resident Evil 4 greatly improved the controllability of the character's offensive moves. And let's just say that unlike other versions of the game, nobody called this one clunky or slow. But therein lies the problem. That clunkiness, that slowness, that's what the game Resident Evil 4 was designed for. Simply extending the controls of a survival horror game means that the original intended experience will no longer be accessible. Improving the fidelity of the control of a character is in a way a power-up. The ultimate power-up. The character's accuracy and aim speed start off many orders above the original. I mean, just look at the shooting range. This optional minigame is crazy difficult to do with a control stick, but using a pointer trivializes it. Unless the antagonizing characters or whatever other actors may serve as a challenge in the game also receive some sort of improvement, this one-sided change disturbs the balance of the challenge of the game. Now, in the particular case of Resident Evil 4, it's forgivable. Why? Well, because Resident Evil 4 naturally features a well-hidden dynamic difficulty system. Check out Mark Brown's video on the subject for more details. So the aggressiveness and apparent intelligence of enemies is derived from the player's performance throughout the game. If you suck, enemies will react much slower. Now, this system is really great and is worth tons of praise, and even though the motion-controlled gameplay makes the game much easier to handle, what happens is that everyone playing the Wii version ends up playing against the fastest and smartest enemies possible. So what's important to know is that they didn't purposely make the enemies tougher in order to counteract the enhanced abilities that the player has in this version, this enemy behavior rather is part of every version of the game, just in the Wii version, it's very easy to unlock it, you could say. That's probably one of the reasons the Wii edition is said to be the definitive Resident Evil 4 experience. Aside from the controls just feeling so smooth, the enemies are always on their best behavior. So just to recap, we've identified two major issues that can affect the user's experience while playing motion-controlled games. First, the complex, gesture-based, simulative controls need to have great affordance and should be modifiable to some capacity by a user. That's to say, it should be clear how to perform an action using the peripherals available, and if it's not, the player should be able to choose how they'd prefer to articulate their inputs. I mean, even Resident Evil 4 is guilty of this. The Wii Remote? It's got a trigger underneath. Like a gun. You know how you fire a gun? You pull the trigger. You know how you fire a gun in Resident Evil 4? You pull the trigger to aim the gun, and you press the A button to fire! This contradicts the mental model that you have of a firearm. 
you use the same action that you use to change channels on a television to shoot at zombies. This is the worst UX possible. I don't know how they let this happen, and, and why can't you just change the controls? How was there not an alternate control scheme that let you pull the trigger to fire on zombies? Second, a game's difficulty balance must be considered when empowering a player with high fidelity control over their character's action. The idea is that you want to put everyone on the same playing field. Giving too much ability to one side or the other can break the game, and designing challenges, specifically enemies around this, that's hard. Now in the example we saw, Resident Evil 4, adding motion controls made everything much, much faster. But there are situations in which controlling something with motion makes you control it a lot slower. So in those cases, enemies need to be adapted to that. They also need to be slow. They need to be a little bit weaker, stuff like that. that that's very, very fair. So with these issues in mind, what's the best motion controlled game? Is it this? <laughs> Uh, n no, not, not at all. Hear me out for a second. Considering the two issues we've identified, I think that the multiplayer mode of Call of Duty 4 on the Wii, subtitled Reflex, addresses both of these issues in surprisingly, probably the most optimal way. First, let's talk about the controls themselves. So as you can imagine, in COD 4 on the Wii, you use the control stick on the nunchuck to move your character and the Wii remote pointer to aim your weapon. However, what's really interesting is that the Wii pointer movement doesn't perform the same behavior as flicks of a right analog stick or movement of a mouse. Rather, it's something different altogether. In the center of your screen, you have a free aim zone, a dead zone. You can point your weapon anywhere within this area without it changing your point of view. However, pointing outside of this zone will cause your camera to rotate itself in the direction you're now pointing. So if you want to aim to the side, you just aim to the side, nothing happens. But if you want to turn your body, you aim further to that side. This is greatly different than the traditional first-person shooter setup where your weapon's aim is coupled directly to your camera's point of view. In those games, the reticle is in the center of your screen, always. You may look up, down, left, right, but your gun always stays in the same spot at the bottom right corner of your view. So here we see the primary mechanic of a shooter. The aiming is independent of player movement and is completely reliant on the motion controls. Now how about the other controls? What are they? How do you, how do, you do stuff? I don't know how to break this to you, but I don't know if it makes sense to even bother trying to explain the other controls because there aren't really any standard controls for this game. COD 4 Reflex includes tons of control schemes. I mean tons. I think there's like nine preset ones you can choose from. Some are more reliant on motion, some are less. But to top it all off, you can fully customize your own. You can map any command to not just any button, but gestures also, even combinations of gestures and buttons. So for example, in the custom control setting that I made for myself, I set the minus button to be special grenades and the plus button to be standard grenades. A couple of the pre-made sets though handle all of grenades with a single button. So to throw a regular grenade, you just press the plus button. But to throw a special grenade, you tilt your Wii remote to the side and then you press it. You can combine gesture, motion, and button presses to maximize the amount of output you can get out of this thing. There's this whole crazy control scheme built specifically for the Wii Zapper that really puts these tilts in use. And the best part is that if you don't like it, you can still make your own custom one by assigning each action to some input. I, for example, didn't like pressing a button to reload, so instead, I mapped it to a shake of the nunchuck. And I remember as a kid, what I would do is, instead of actually shaking the nunchuck, which required like a big shake, uh, what I would do is I would kind of tap it into the Wii remote because the collision would trigger it also and it kind of felt cool because like here I am I run out of ammo and then I slap another mag into the thing or also I think I think the default for knifing was pressing down on the d-pad which is kind of hard because when you're you're shooting at somebody it's hard to access the down button so I just set it to a shake of the Wii remote so I could just go up to somebody I'm shooting at them and then I get too close and I just knife them also worth note at the time an FPS standard feature leaning to look around corners was never available on consoles as designers couldn't figure out how to map it to controllers so it remained a PC exclusive feature until the Wii version which allowed you to lean and peek around corners by rotating the nunchuck. So alright, great, the game lets you set your own gestures and controls. That's pretty good, that alone is sufficient to solve our first problem. Oh wait, Infinity Ward, you're not done? Y you can do more than this? What? <sighs> now here's where things start bouncing off the walls. Okay, okay, look, I wouldn't say this unless I actually meant it, and I hate making statements like this that, that sound unbelievable, but you can modify and change literally 
everything in this game to your liking. Uh, I'm not playing around. So you know how games, how, how software like this works, right? Uh, don't worry, I'm not gonna go into graph stuff. But basically, what controls come down to is a bunch of different variables that serve as ranges, restrictions, or values that are used when the system performs your character's movement. The thing is though, the developers of this game, likely realizing how particular people can be when it comes to motion controls, well, they opened everything up to you. You can spend hours just tweaking your controls. It's that broad. You can change your aim zone, both for hip fire and when aiming down sights. You can change your vertical and horizontal speeds when rotating your view, both from the hip and from the sights. You can choose whether or not to enable camera lock that holds your point of view in place and allows you to aim freely within it. Sort of like a locked strafe, but with free aim. I mean, look at how smooth it makes that part in the tanker where you're shooting guys from like across that little bridge thing. On any other version of the game, you couldn't do this because adjusting your aim adjusts the position that your character is moving. No other game or control scheme allows you to perform such movements so easily. You can customize everything to do with the pointer and reticle. You can change the color. You can eliminate it completely. You can change the shape of it. You can change the boldness of it. You can change the opacity of it. Apparently, when I played, I liked it thick as Hamish Black. You can choose what your character should do when you aim off screen. Should they continue to turn around indefinitely, or should this lock the camera? Like, I'm not joking when I say that you can spend hours, and that you likely will spend hours staring at this screen, making slight modifications until you eventually come to some control scheme that you think just, just matches your playstyle perfectly. Now, the obvious comparison to be made is to The Conduit, a popular Wii-exclusive first-person shooter that was published about five months prior to Reflex. Now, I highlight that short time range because it indicates that both companies must have been making similar design decisions around the same time. Just because The Conduit first showcased a Dead Zone feature doesn't mean that the Reflex team copied it. It's very likely that they came to the same designs independently of each other. I mean, they were, they were trying to solve the same problem. What is important, though, is that the players, The Conduit prepared them for the sorts of interfaces that Call of Duty 4 would also ask them to use. So like I mentioned, The Conduit first presented the idea of a Dead Zone and also allowed for its customization. The game also allowed for other control parameters to be modified. Nowhere near as many as COD, but still a lot, though some of it was kind of silly. Like, who really cared about being able to change the placement of the HUD elements? They were kind of already perfectly placed. Oh ho ho, look at me! I've got my grenade stock displayed in the center of my screen like an idiot! Despite everything the Conduit did right in terms of giving the player a say in how their motion controls would work, there was one critical flaw with their settings that prevented it from being as effective a solution as it should have been. While in-game, you could not change these settings. To edit control settings, you'd have to do it from a menu outside of the main game. You can imagine the use case of someone trying to play the game, feeling something off, wanting to change it, and having to exit the game in order to do that, only to come back and be unable to notice the difference enacted by their modification. When it comes to changing game controls, this needs to be possible within gameplay so that a player can get a feel for it on the spot. You don't want to go through minutes of loading screens just to test an adjustment. In Call of Duty Reflex though, the settings menu can be accessed literally whenever. Not in a game, you can do it. In single player, you got it. In multiplayer, well, it doesn't pause the match, but you can make your changes mid-play. As an example, here's a use case that you might have actually seen live as I streamed some COD Reflex recently. During a match, I tried using my knife, which I had as a shake of the Wii remote, but it failed a few times. So right after, during the same match, I went into the settings, increased the Wii remote shake sensitivity, reducing the minimum amplitude of a waggle that would be registered as input, tested it out a few times to get a feel for my custom knife gesture, and once satisfied, I continued continued playing and got a knife kill later on. So Call of Duty 4 Reflex addresses the issue of customizable controls in a way that goes well above the minimum viable solution. Like I said, you can spend tons and tons of time just learning about these controls and you can access them from any point in the game. It's glorious. This is the sort of game that when you do the typical shooting range tutorial level, it actually feels like you're learning how to use these weapons. Now something you might have noticed is that I've been mentioning multiplayer. This has nothing to do with the subject of today's video, but like, as I was preparing to capture footage of this game, I accidentally stumbled into a matchmaking screen which I expected would just get me stuck there for a while before being disconnected, just like it had happened to me with the Conduit since Nintendo officially discontinued WFC support a few years ago. But I was absolutely shaken to the bone when a match was actually made and I found myself playing Call of Duty 4 on the Wii against actual people online in 2017. Call of Duty 4, the game that doesn't even work on PlayStation 3 anymore, for some reason active Vision is still supporting the Wii version of it. <laughs> Yo, what the heck? So the other issue we identified with these sorts of games had to do with the challenge matching the player's ability set. 
One quick and interesting way to solve this problem is to pit players up against other players with the same control abilities. That's why I specified that it's the multiplayer mode that really is the best implementation of motion controls in a game. Really though, it all comes down to a single thing, a single reason why this game is an absolute gem. Unlike future Call of Duty titles for the Wii and Wii U that supported standard dual analog controllers for input, Call of Duty Reflex only supports the motion control based Wii Remote and Nunchuck setup. Now, unlike how motion controls exclusively improved player abilities in Resident Evil 4, Call of Duty 4's motion controlled gameplay doesn't equate or really compare to normal controls. It's not worse, let's get that out of the way, but it's certainly different. Almost solely as a result of the POV rotation speed needing to be reduced, the game is much slower in terms of movement. So what you get is a version of Call of Duty where players are much more cautious and move much slower, but are able to target enemies within their view much faster. Nobody's zipping around running all over the place, they're looking for targets within their screen. While traditional Call of Duty is about getting around the map as quickly as possible, pointing at and clicking on enemies, Call of Duty on the Wii is less seek and destroy point and click and more ray tracing. You want to find a position that you can stay stable in, lock your camera, and aim at targets within your dead zone. When you enter an online match, sure, you're using motion controls that force you to behave differently, but so is everyone else. Every time someone kills you, you know that someone somewhere across the globe possibly had to actually twist their wrist to aim at you and that they had to pull a trigger to open fire on you. This sort of relationship between your teammates and enemies, everyone being on the same boat control wise and everyone also knowing that, that's what makes this game such a charm to experience. No other large scale multiplayer games that I'm aware of have ever forced all players to use some degree of motion control. Everyone makes it optional, but by making it mandatory, it turns this into something else. It's crazy because what happens is that Call of Duty, this game designed for high speed FPS action, this game with super tight mechanics, it becomes the perfect home for this slow paced, five versus five, fully motion controlled game. Sure, some things were changed to suit the Wii version a little better. For example, hip fire accuracy is by default much better. But the added reliance on your own skill, your own reflexes, that counteracts it and supports the slower approach to battles. If you're sprinting in and suddenly see someone, it's gonna take you a second to reposition your camera before being able to actually engage them. If you take fire from a certain direction, you can't immediately orient yourself to its source. It takes you a while to turn. If you want to shoot at someone from the hip, you have to consider whether or not your own gun will obstruct your view, causing you to apply suppressive fire on an enemy rather than an accurate tracking. But this works on the other side too, there are mind games you can play with the enemy. The knowledge that it takes a while for other players to turn around can be used when picking hiding spots. Since people will generally only have the best view of what's in front of them, staying to the side can keep you safe and flanking is a much more possible strategy to perform. Because people move more slowly, flanking actually gives you an advantage. I mean, look, I used to play a lot of COD 4 on PC. A lot. And you see this map here? I've never seen anything like this happen here. Normally people are just running all over the place, running around trying to get their own kills. But because here each player has difficulty accessing the peripherals of their vision, players actually stick together, unintentionally forming up and spreading out. Rather than a total free-for-all, here everyone is holding their ground, slowly pushing forward whenever an opening is available. Risky behavior on the part of anyone will result in a quick death. You get a lot of standoffs in this game, a lot of quiet moments, and it's crazy because this isn't the sort of stuff you see in any other version of Call of Duty. The movement being slower and more realistic. The reduced effect of aim assist through mandatory pointer based aiming, which by the way is totally subject to recoil from vibrations in the controller and other unintentional movements of your hand. These housed in a game with rock freaking solid mechanics and an environment where everyone else has to deal with it too. This is the sort of game that bridges the gap between a full on action FPS and a combat simulator. The battles I've had in these multiplayer matches have been more tense and memorable than those I've had in other Call of Duties. A room that you typically run straight through in a normal COD becomes a temporary shelter where you can take rest and keep an eye out for the enemy. You're always looking for places to hold out in and pin the enemy down from. Aiming is hard, you miss a lot of your shots. Running around like a madman does not work. You only ever feel safe progressing forward if there's a teammate nearby who can cover you. A game that is often known for representing a very glamorous and exciting depiction of warfare as a result of a new control scheme imposed on all players becomes one of the most immersive and realistic simulation experiences I think you can have, at least on the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> 
Now the single player, <laughs> forget about it. Just like Resident Evil 4, the enemies and scenarios weren't designed for it and weren't changed to accommodate it. It's a total mess. Even on the easiest difficulty, it's hard to get a shot on anyone. And those walking segments, they're just really bad with the pointer. It doesn't feel good at all. But that's why I'm talking about the multiplayer only. This game, this is something you really need to play to believe. This is the game that gives me faith in the use of motion controls in competitive play. People make fun of such controls because they're rarely done right. But doing them right, giving people complete control over their controls, and giving them all the same controls, it makes for a really engaging time. And holy crap, you can turn your gun sideways, dude! You can just sweep dudes like an Uzi, like you're in the Matrix! <laughs> Last I checked, the multiplayer still works. If this video has at all piqued your interest in either the game specifically or more generally how motion controls can work in a multiplayer setting, please consider picking this thing up. It seems to go for around 5 Canuck bucks on eBay. And World at War has the same deal, you know, being controlled exclusively through motion, even in multiplayer. So if you can pick up either, it's a blast. Though I, I, I don't know if the latter still works or not, I don't personally own it. I'm really glad I was able to experience this multiplayer game again. I, 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 until I had started doing it, I kind of forgot what it was like, and in preparation for this video, I watched a lot of competitive players or players who really just have an audience on YouTube who watch them play different Call of Duty games on the Wii with motion controls. There's, there's actually people who do that and I, I listened to a lot of their insight and a lot of the things they had to say about the game and that's where I, I learned some of these things that I, I expressed here. And now hearing these rumors that Call of Duty supposedly is coming back to Nintendo that there will be some sort of Call of Duty released on the Switch, that excites me because the Joy-Cons are like the, 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 the Wii Remote Plus Plus. The pointer technology was great, but gyros are kind of the future of motion control. The gyro can give you the, the control that a mouse gives you. So I hope that it's not like a crappy port. I hope that they continue to support the motion control schemes like they did on the Wii U versions of Call of Duty. And, and, and I really hope, because this was the one reason I didn't get, I never got a Call of Duty for Wii U, you, you couldn't matchmake with people who were exclusively using motion controls. I, I hope if they make a Switch version that uses the Joy-Con to their fullest potential, I, I hope that there's a way to play only with other people doing that. Beca because it's a whole other thing. If, if they don't do that, this experience is really just going to be exclusively reserved to Call of Duty 4 on the Wii and Call of Duty World at War on the Wii. No other game will probably ever allow you to have that experience. So I'm, I'm really, really excited for the return of, of, of motion control Call of Duty, if it's done right. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped you see motion controls in maybe a different light. And um, that's about it. See you later, Jimmy. Hello and welcome to the end screen! Yo, that was the strongest end screen that uh, we've had here in a while. That was good. I'm impr Like, I did that and I was like, wow, that was good. Now, there are some problems with it that I didn't talk about in the video, but I didn't talk about them because I, I, I don't... I don't know what the source of them are, and I don't, I don't even know if they're issues or if I just am not good. Uh, basically, one of the things is that shotguns just don't work in the game. Well, at least I I cannot get a shotgun kill. <laughs> because the thing is, the shotguns, the spread on the shotguns uh, in Call of Duty is not actually as wide as, as you think it is if you've come from like a game like Resident Evil 4. But also, I feel like maybe one of, I, I think one of the issues is that the Nintendo WFC, or not the WFC, but the, the internet connection on a Wii isn't so greatly optimized. I don't think, I, I think there is a lot of lag between getting the, the data about players' positions and sending, transmitting your data to the server about what you're doing in the game. Um, because you'll fire on a dude sometimes and there's, there's no hit, but like you clearly would have shot him like from playing other call of duties i know that's a hit so with the shotgun like you're firing on dudes and they're just they're you're not like you're not even getting a hit marker so i have a feeling that part of it is to do with the lag another part of it believe it or not could be because of the frame rate so i i this is this comes from some like youtubers who specifically do call of duty on the wii gameplay and i, I heard a couple of conversations about how the frame rate so the frame rate on the wii version is actually 30 frames per second which Normally in Call of Duty it's always 60. So because on the Wii version it runs at 30, apparently there are some things that in the game that might be reliant on the frame rate. So for example, uh, I, I don't know if the bullets are really ray traced or if they simulate a projectile, but if they simulate projectiles, it would make sense that there's a 50-50 chance that your bullet could miss. Because if the game, let's say they, they built it like, so let me ex try to explain this. Let's say they built the game knowing that it's always running at 60 frames per second and you fire a bullet and a bullet is coming to a surface and it, it's it's moving in, in iterations of, of, it's moving 60 times per second, right? If they know that it's moving 60 times per second, they know the range in which the bullet should have like a hitbox, for example. 
uh, and they, they can detect when it hits the wall. But if it's at 30 frames per second, if it's if it's doing double the distance per, per frame, like maybe in your eyes, it, it looks like it's operating at the same speed, but to the system, it's running at twice the speed. If, it, if it's been poorly ported or poorly optimized, what could happen is that because it's moving faster, that point at which the bullet collides, based off the jump between frames, that point could be skipped. And the system never actually registers that there was a hit. So for th I, I feel like that might be a source of some of the issues with it. Because it's really hard to shoot people sometimes and it's much easier if you have a gun with a high rate of fire. Because just by shooting more bullets you have a higher probability that you'll hit somebody. For example, like anytime you see a gun on the ground you should always pick it up because you know you're going to run out of ammo. But the P90 in particular just, just murks people. The only time in this game, for example, that I got uh, the full kill streak thing, which was I got to the helicopter, which I didn't even get to call. I didn't even get to call the helicopter, but um, I unlocked it, and that was because I picked up somebody's P90 off the ground, and I was just wrecking dudes. Yeah, it's like it's it's really good, but maybe unintentionally that adds to the realism of it because in in real war scenarios, this is what people don't realize. You're not you don't always just fire on a dude when you see him. There's such a thing as suppressive fire. You're just firing on dudes. You're firing in the general direction of people just. To, to keep them at bay. And, and that's something that the Battlefield games actually do really well, is that they give you points for suppressive fire, which I think is phenomenal. I kind of wish that... In Call of Duty, it doesn't make sense for them to have it in, in the normal, traditional control schemes, but uh, on like a Wii version, or a version where the controls are a little bit goofier, or they're more realistic, or you're actually being affected by your own, the recoil of your hand of... of you know, when you, when you, oh my god, I knocked something over. When you p pull a trigger, when you, when you, like, you're holding it steady, but when you pull this, the remote moves. Your view moves, depending on how your hand is, and you're rotating, and you're in a tense situation, because you're in a firefight. What fell? Oh, this is a naked gun. But yeah, so, so, what am, what the heck am I saying? What the heck was I even talking about? I don't even know. Something about your hand moving. Oh yeah, so because of that, I, I, I wish they would give you... Like, I wish they would give you, like, a participation medal. But that's that's the thing. Call of Duty isn't about simulating warfare, the traditional ones. It's it's more about just run-and-gun action. Why doesn't Mario Kart have a dedicated matchmaking mode for tilt control? Actually, they might, to be honest. I don't know. But, like, I hope I hope Call of Duty on the Switch uh, has, like, a dedicated motion control, tilt control matchmaking mode. And I, I hope they go above what Call of Duty on the Wii and Wii U have done, which is allow you to combine gestures and buttons, and I hope they allow you to construct your own gestures using gyro. I mean, the Apple iPhone allows you to do that. You can create gestures with your fingers that you can call upon. I think it's in your accessibility settings. So if you want, you can you can generate a scroll and then you can call upon that scroll when you're on a page to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page. You can do goofy stuff like that. But with gyro, it's 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 much simpler. You can like, you know, instead of instead of sitting there and it being like, okay, you want to change your knife button or your knife command? Okay, do do a you know press a button. Instead of doing that, it says, okay, what gesture do you want for a knife? And then you just take your control and you say, I want it to be this. And then your gyro registers that and then this motion is the knife and whenever you do something close enough to this it knives but instead of you know it won't do it when you do this but for example this could be reloading or you know you want to you want to do something where you you pull the scope out of your gun and you don't want to press a button maybe you could do something where you hold the remote and you go in a circle and doing a circle pulls the scope up or something maybe you could do something like that i don't know it'd be cool to have like a fully gesture or gestures and buttons and all sorts like it'd be so, like they're never going to do it because it's going to cost so much money and it would it would definitely be accurate it's definitely possible i mean there's even the gestures with the hand doesn't the thing have like a hand gesture recognizer imagine that imagine how could you add that to call of duty like hand hand gesture recognition what if you could do like you could command a squad what if you like could command your teammates by giving them like gestures i forgot that the joy con does that that's that's the thing is these Joy-Cons and the staff behind Call of Duty and the, the dedication to software quality, something I didn't bring up in the video I wanted to, but the fact that they were able to take an existing game, extend the controls like that, is uh, an indicator of extremely high software quality, extremely diligent processes involved in, in the development of Call of Duty, the software project, the software product, Call of Duty. It, they didn't just make the game to be releasable, they made the game to be maintainable and to be extendable, to be scalable. That, that's phenomenal. Activision, say what you will about them, but they, they are phenomenal software developers. So what I'm saying is that the hardware of these Joy-Cons and the creativity and processes behind 
the staff at Activision and, and their aptitude to build something like this. If if they did it, it would probably be one of the most incredible first print. It would like be the next generation of, of immersive games, of, of first person shooters. It would blow everybody's freaking mind. I'm, 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 I know I'm looking off, I'm not looking at the camera, but that's because I'm looking at my Switch over there and I'm just like, I'm just looking at the potential in it and it doesn't even look at me because I think I turned it off, but uh, yeah. Update on the Hamish Black situation. He still eludes me somehow, but here's the deal. I can prove that Hamish Black does not check his timeline because who would not respond to like 50 preserved lemons, you know? But yeah, he's, he's still unaware of my presence or my identity. Actually, I made I messed up today because while I was filming, there was that storm and then I uh, periscoped it from I, I, like live video on Twitter and I didn't realize what Twitter account I was logged into. I was logged into the bicep. So I was live streaming film footage video from the bicep. Uh, I don't, he's, he's probably sleeping at this time. He's in Scotland or whatever the heck. So he didn't see me, but it was close. I deleted it after. So yeah, that's about it. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this coffee it's just gonna go right through me and I'm just gonna, gonna enjoy life. See you guys around. Peace.